Hi there guys, my name is Nassim Man. today I just want to talk about Supergirl. Uh, yeah, I know it's a, a topic and a show that sort of split DC fans and DC television fans and I just wanted to, you know, throw my two cents in there, see if anyone cared. Um, when Supergirl started, there was a lot of positive reviews about the first episode, the first few episodes saying that it was a different type of superhero show that it was admirable that there was a female-led superhero show that was doing well and exploring interesting stories and I, I sort of sat back and I thought I must be watching a different show because Super when Supergirl started it was a horrible show. It was cheesy, it was poorly written, it was poorly constructed, it was poorly directed, it was just bad, it was plain bad, it was cringeworthy even more so than The Office which is supposed to be cringeworthy and I'm talking about the UK version or the American version but they're both just as good and what happened was I stuck with it because you know it's a it's a DC TV show I'm a big fan of DC a big fan of Supergirl so I thought I'd give it a shot uh, you know give it a shot carry on watching and eventually what happened was they introduced the Martian Manhunter Jean Jones played by David Harewood and for a couple of episodes Supergirl actually became very enjoyable it became interesting explored intriguing ideas and I found myself becoming invested in these characters but then just like that it went back to the old crappy show it was with cheesy choreography with really bad lines that really hurt the ears and character decisions that made no sense at all and with the second season now moving to the CW as opposed to the CBS where it was originally I think there will be a few changes and I'm hoping more than just a few changes to better the show and I just want to talk about what a few of them would would and should be. Um, the first is the fact that despite its best effort, Supergirl still operates in Superman's shadow. Um, granted, he will appear in the first two episodes of the new season with an actor being cast in the role and hopefully then recurring, but his absence in the first season was not explained well enough. You know, there's global threats, big threats that not just not just focus on national city but the entire earth as a whole and superman's nowhere to be seen i mean he's dropping instant messages to kara like you know he's got something something better to do whilst the entire earth is under threat and when we do see him it's blurry shots which just it's just a, a bad shot with sort of a gaussian blur on top and we're supposed to be like yeah superman but these blurry shots these cheesy callbacks callbacks that are as cheesy as the first season of agents of shield with those avengers hence by the way all these things just make you want to watch a Superman show rather than a Supergirl show. They make you want to watch a show that the writers aren't giving us. And I think the main problem is that these two character stories are so inherently connected that you have to show them together to get a feel for Supergirl, to get a feel for Superman. And I think the second season will be exploring that a little bit better. And I think just the natural presence of a character as beloved and great as Superman will elevate the show just that much, just that much more. Speaking of adding characters, there's a character that I think the show needs to cut entirely and that is Jimmy Olsen. First of all, there's nothing wrong with casting a black, black actor in the role. The race the race of the character, the colour of his skin, the colour of his hair is not important to who Jimmy Olsen is. It's his personality and they've got him entirely wrong. They've crafted this Jimmy Olsen that no one really cares about, no one likes, no one wants him to be on screen at all. I'll give you a quick example here. Yeah? In the 14th episode, Kara is holding Maxwell Lord because he tried to kill her. You know, he sees her as a threat, she's an alien, he tried to kill her, yeah? So he's, she is holding him, you know, she's holding him so that he can't do anything like that ever again. And we are subjected to more than more than a few scenes of Jimmy Olsen telling Kara how this is wrong, how she can't take the law into her own hands, how she can't be above the law. And I sat back and I thought, what the fuck is going on? A few episodes earlier, Olsen had not only broken and entered into law tech, he had hacked his superiors and he had talked about how you have to go above the law to get things done. And But now, literally a week later, he's telling Kara that she, she can't be doing what she's doing. It's all artificial drama and that's the one thing that pissed me off the most about Supergirl's first season is that the writers don't know what they're doing. It's artificial drama, they think they flip a coin, they think this is what our character's going to be doing this week. This is what we want him to be doing this week, this is what we want her to be doing this week. And we don't care what they did last week, we only care what they're doing this week and we won't care next week what they did this week. It's really annoying and the fact that, look, Jimmy Olsen is at his base a horribly boring and vacuous character yeah he's a black hole of a character but at least stick with it or show a natural progression a natural change not just a sudden one just like that 
that just shows you're not respecting your audience and that's the one thing that you can't do as a show because audiences are getting smarter you show, you you do that you're disrespecting your audience from then what the show started to do which i really hated and nearly made me drop the show as a whole was focus on its weaknesses as opposed to its strengths for instance the main draw of supergirl is melissa benoist cara dealing with her belonging a loss and the memories of krypton yeah there is a scene which i still contend to be the best scene in the entire season where she shoots lasers at red tornado yeah who by the way is horribly designed he looks horrible it's, it's i've seen cosplays that are better than that but she's shooting lasers at a red tornado yeah it's such a powerful scene the music the look on the noise face the cutbacks to krypton everything is just so powerful for once the action had force behind it it had meaning it had you know it, it was engrossing at each and every second yeah and suddenly it dawned on me look this is a button that the supergirl writers can press they can choose to use this button anytime and have a real emotional weight come from the audience regarding this character it was a weapon they needed to use sparingly granted they need to use sparingly but they needed to use it throughout the season but guess what the show never used that button ever again instead they focused on jimmy olsen love triangles and secretarial battles between Kara and a warring secretary because that's what the writers think we want from a supergirl show i would much rather watch <laughs> scenes like this powerful scenes like this as opposed to uh, Kara, you know backbiting with the secretary i'm not watching ugly betty i'm watching supergirl you know when we talk about how much they rely on the relationship between Kara and Jimmy Olsen and how much they rely on Jimmy Olsen as a character we have to talk about how they are under utilizing otherwise enjoyable characters for instance Wynn who is an audience favorite you know people like him he's fun he's sort of the Cisco of the show he's uh, got quips he's endearing he's cute but he's constantly being shafted in favor of Jimmy Olsen. I mean, there is an episode that focuses on Wynn, where they bring in his father, Toy Man, and there's a lot of emotion there, there's a lot of backstory, a lot of, you know, real meat there for us to chew on, and that's it. We spend one episode on it, and then he's relegated to the background. He's, you know, he's relegated even more so than he was before that episode, you know, because of a rift with Kara, which everyone seems to have a rift with Kara every now and again but he's relegated to the background and instead we're focusing on Lucy Lane, Jimmy Olsen and Cara Danvers. We're focusing on a love triangle that no one gives a shit about because it doesn't feel real, it feels contrived simply for the sake of having a love triangle in a network show. And when we're talking about underutilized characters, there is none more so than the Martian Manhunter. When you have a, an actor like David Harewood, when you have someone world class like David Harewood and you are focusing on, and I hate to sound like a broken record, you're focusing on Jimmy Olsen over David Harewood, you are a fucktard, alright? You're a fucking idiot. When you make a show like Supergirl, you know that a major part of your fan base will be hardcore fans. So why the hell are you reducing the amount of screen time for David Harewood's John Jones in favor of characters like Siobhan Smythe and Lucy Lane? I do not understand that. I do not. I I honestly think Superman had more screen time than Martian Manhunter this season. That's how fucking stupid the handling of Martian Manhunter was this season. And don't give me the six years that is expensive to show Martian Man Manhunter. It is not expensive to show David Harewood occasionally turning around with his red eyes glowing. Okay, it's not expensive at all. I would just watch David Harewood. I don't need him to grow big, have green skin. Yeah, you can do that every now and again. Yeah, and it's amazing when you see a shot of him flying with Supergirl. But the fact that you've tossed him aside after a few episodes, focused on other things, shows that honestly, some of these writers don't know what the fuck they're doing with these characters. It became infuriating and straining to watch the show after a while when you see someone like that in the background walking around signing papers and in the foreground you've got Jimmy Olsen talking about oh that kiss was really good oh you know oh that kiss made me feel oh I don't give a shit and I think that brings us to a conclusion really the second season moved to the CW has to change a lot of things with Supergirl and you know I don't know if it will there's recent comments by Melissa Bono saying that it will be the same show on the CW and I hope to god she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about because if it's the same show we're gonna get another crap season of Supergirl 
there needs to be a lot of changes a lot of characters need to be ditched a lot of characters need to be brought forward technically it needs to change a lot of writers need to be ditched i think this whole show needs a facelift and i think maybe throwing it into the cw universe properly this time around will do that for for the show um but i will say one thing though even though i did not like the first season of supergirl you know with a uh, bar a few episodes here and there i had infinitely more fun watching supergirl than i did this past season of arrow so you know there's a positive so you can't blame me for being all negative this you know this video but you know i know a lot of people that enjoyed supergirl i don't know what they saw in it and i'd like to hear what they saw in it you know what did you guys like it did you hate it what do you expect from the coming season you know these are all questions that you know maybe you convinced me that supergirl did some did some things that i completely missed you know and uh, i'd like to hear about that so uh, thanks for watching and listening and uh, keep safe guys for finale i think some of the things emil says are very important sometimes a bit contradictory and i think in some ways rather controversial so let's look at his first the one of the first things he said and i quote